Welcome to the Mom Owned and Operated Podcast, the podcast about moms and for moms, where we have candid conversations about running a business, raising a family, and remembering ourselves. I'm your host, Rita Suzanne, a single mom of four, digital strategist, and provider of no-nonsense business strategies and tactics. Hi, I'm Rita Suzanne, and today I have my guest, Chelsea, with me. Chelsea, I'm so excited to chat with you. Please tell everyone a little bit about you, your business, and your family. Sure. Thanks, Rita. Um, My name is Chelsea Skaggs. I am located in central Ohio, um, and I have two kiddos. So I have a seven. I actually hate the word kiddos, so I can't believe I said that, but it just comes out. I have a (laughs) seven-year-old. And a five-year-old, um, my five-year-old, just my journeys were very different. My five-year-old was born with some medical complexities. And so <laughs> I, I thought for sure that second round would be like easy breezy. I know what I'm doing. Um, but of course life always brings its twists and turns. Yeah. Uh, and then my partner is Mike and we've been married for almost 12 years. I think I was just recounting that, um, when we, our one month anniversary was also our one year of knowing each other anniversary. (laughs) So I was never the person who thought I would take a relationship quick like that. Um, but it has, it has worked out. It's been a really fun journey. So I am a certified professional life coach and I decided to specialize in expecting in new parents, really focusing on the relationship aspect of, why does no one talk about how much your personal identity and your relationship identity and the capacity you have for one another changes so much? And so I help couples to really recalibrate and find their way as a team uh, in the chaos. I love, I love all of that. And so, you know, I was reading through all of your stuff and obviously, well, not obviously, people don't know that we've met in person because I also live in central Ohio, but I was reading through your website and through the information that you submitted for the call. And one of the things that caught my attention was when you were talking about how you were in the kitchen and you just kind of fell down and you were just thinking about how you just didn't know if your marriage was going to be able to make it through having a baby. And I remember doing that same thing when I was pregnant with my first son and I wasn't in the kitchen. I was in my son's room and I was just so upset. And I was just like, I just don't, I just thought things were going to be so different. I just thought it was going to be so different. Yeah. We're definitely sold such a blissful picture and there are really beautiful, blissful moments, but that is not the full story. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. But then the other thing that really um, caught my attention was, you know, the title of this episode is going to be, you know, how to not impress other people. And I love that so much because when I thought about making this podcast, it was all about really telling people how it really is and being Mm -hmm. honest and truthful about what it's really like to be a mom, run your business Mm -hmm. and trying to take care of yourself at the same time. But what I have found in these last few years of doing this is that when I'm not recording, there's a lot of honesty that happens. Mm -hmm. But as soon as you hit the record button, the business owner turns on and then, you know, there's, there's some uh, covering up, I guess that yeah. happens as well. So I'd love to talk a little bit more about that and, and, you know, just feel like what, what do you think that's about? Mm, yeah, that's really interesting for me to reflect on. So um, I, I started <laughs> an Instagram, right? Early back in the days of trying to figure out what my business was going to be and what was my passion and how was I sharing that? Um, and, and social media has come a long way, but it's, it's still not, you know, still not where it needs to be, I would say. But seven years ago, when I was a new mom, it just felt like 
every moment was like, how do I polish this? How do I polish this up for social media so that I can inspire or, you know, people will like it or people will be attracted to me as a person and as someone who is trying to become, you know, a thought leader in that way. And I was burnt out on that. It's so quickly and so easily that you can just become burnt out on that because it takes so much extra energy. But I, I think because we live in a time and age where we are constantly able to see someone else's motherhood or someone else's business and how it presents itself out in the world, it's easy for us to think that we need to have something impressive. We need to, you know, come out of the woodwork with some brilliant aha phrase or some, you know, picture capturing something incredible. Um, and I think, you know, as business leaders, there's a lot of a lot of natural tendency to want to cover up our weaknesses or not get into the vulnerable spaces, especially as women, because we aren't given the benefit of the doubt as much, I think, as our male counterparts are in business. And so it almost feels like we have even more to prove, even more to impress, because we're also doing this while managing usually the mental load of our family mm-hmm. and schedules and logistics. And so I, I think when we slow down and embrace the messy, sometimes that feels so raw and overwhelming that it can be easier to not even open yourself up to it. So we kind of, you know, polish and box things. Yeah, I feel like um, because they're business owners, they feel like if people know the real me, then Mm -hmm. they won't want to hire me, right? Because Mm -hmm. I'm not professional. I'm not polished. I'm not all put together all the time. And then they won't feel that they can trust me to help them. And I feel like... You know, unfortunately, I tell my clients all the time, like sometimes you just have to show like the ugly part of it, because that's what resonates with people the most is not the polished part, not the perfect part. Although a lot of us want to project that perfection. Yeah, definitely. I think one of the most helpful things that I learned was that my ideal client is a few steps behind me. And my, my job is to get them to a better point, not to this level of perfection, which is honestly not a guarantee I would ever be able to make. Well, it's not even attainable for anybody, right? Like perfection is not even something that any of us can achieve at all. So, um, and especially as moms, I think that there's so much pressure to try to be the quote unquote, like perfect mom. And Mm -hmm. so how do you feel like moms do, especially new moms, like how much pressure, you know, how are you helping them go through that and help them deal with not worrying about impressing other Mm -hmm. people in that aspect? Yeah. Yeah. Two aspects to that. Um, the first is what I always call like the Pinterest collage mom. (laughs) And I, I, I think we take little snippets of these different people's lives that we've seen and we make a collage of those. And that becomes this ideal, perfect mom that we're shooting to, uh, attain in our own lives. So maybe, you know, there's the influencer who is doing all of these homemade pureed foods for their babies. And then there's the one that's just super into fitness and, you know, counting their macros or whatever. And there's one that is doing play dates all across their city, so on and so forth. People have their specialties. And I think sometimes we forget this person showing one area, this person showing one area that they have chosen Mm -hmm. and we cannot expect ourselves to be all of all of those things. And so we can do anything. We cannot do everything or not without burning ourselves out. And so the second part to that is that I always start with new moms of helping them to say what really does matter most to you. Like, let's put all this aside What are your top values? How do you want your family to feel? What do you want your child to remember about this time? What do you want to remember about this time? 
And that becomes like the bouncer in your brain. So you, you create a mini version of yourself and it's this bouncer in your brain that says like, oh, you know what? That's not in my top values. I cannot let myself stress over that. That doesn't get to take up space in my brain. You have to filter. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I'm an ambitious person. I love having goals for myself and I love achieving goals. Um, but if I'm trying to do all of them, then I do none of them well. And so the same for a new mom or a couple or whoever it is, if you don't know what your top values and priorities are, you're grasping at all of these straws and not taking clear action. Yeah, I think at, especially, you know, my kids are teenagers now, so it's kind of hard for me to think about what it was like as a new mom. But one thing that I do remember was just so much pressure that I had and how I really was trying to be so perfect, right? Mm -hmm. I was just wanting to do it so perfectly because I had went through, you know, five years of infertility and I was just, you know, everything had to be perfect during my pregnancy, which ended up in a C-section, which I didn't want, you know, that messed up my whole like birth plan and everything else. And then once I had my son and I was home, everything had to be exactly, you know, I wanted to breastfeed. And, you know, that worked out for a little bit, but then I had to go back to work and, you know, and then I was depressed and I didn't even realize that I was depressed until after, you know, it was like a lot, a lot of these things. And, um, I just remember feeling so much stuff, but it was like so heavy at one time. And I think what it, what it is like, to your point is like, we're trying to do all the things at one time and not focusing on the one thing. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where we make the biggest mistake. And that's where someone like you comes in and is like really helps us to like focus and hone in on what we really need to worry about. And it's not really like what, what a car seat we buy. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, I don't really prescribe to the idea of like, just don't worry about it. I enjoy worrying about things <laughs> because it, it gets me to a next space, right. but it it's what do we choose to put that kind of energy and intention towards? Yeah. I love that because I think that, you know, as moms, we're going to worry anyways, right? We, right. Still, we still, I still worry about my, my kids all the time. And like I said, they're teenagers. I still, um, you know, try, I'm trying not to control them, but I'm, I still am worried about all of them at, at all times. Um, so what do you think? So here's something that I love to talk about is that when, when women have babies, there's such a huge shift in your identity, right? Um, let's talk about that for a few minutes. Like, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think it is like a massive shipwreck and then you get to decide what do you want to preserve? Um, what do you want to let go of? And what do you want to maybe find a fresh, fresh approach or fresh tool in, um, you know, I don't think a lot of us are prepared for how much it shifts the way our brain works, the way we see ourselves in our family, because now we are a parent and how that impacts how we relate to our parents, to our siblings, to our partners, to our coworkers, to our friends. And it's just a very layered change. It changes you on every level. Right. Um, which I think can either be a really hard, um, cause a lot of resistance, or it can be a really beautiful transition. I like to invite people to say, you know what, your life is going to change in so many ways. Let's, let's just choose to make this a beautiful transition where you get to know yourself more than you ever had before. Um, but but it's hard in a society that doesn't honor uh, everything that comes with that. With, you know, our time is not honored. Our recovery is not honored. Our, you know, the way that our brains literally rewire themselves in some ways, like the science behind it, it's just not talked about. It's not honored in our policies and in our society. And so sometimes as women, we're kind of, we're kind of swimming upstream 
But I think what we get to do is stri- swim upstream together <laughs> and pull one another along and say, this is, this is a rebirth in so many ways. And we get to decide what to hang on to and in the ways that we're going to redefine ourselves. Yeah. I think that uh, if we don't isolate ourselves, right, because oftentimes moms will Mm -hmm. isolate themselves because they're caught in that cycle of trying to be perfect and all of that stuff. And so one of the things I always talk about is trying, you know, take it how moms are not taking care of themselves, especially after they have, have Mm -hmm. children, right there, they become more focused on everything else. And then Mm -hmm. if you add a business in Mm -hmm. the mix as well, then you also then lose priority on yourself again, right? So it it just becomes even, you become even lower, unfortunately. Right. Yeah. And when that, I, I mean, I think that that just naturally happens a lot of times and that's, but we don't want to stay there. We want to say, oh, this is, this is where I've, I've gotten to, but also I want to be my fullest version of myself for my kids and as a business owner for my business. And Mm -hmm. I have to ask myself, what do I need not to like luxuriously, you know, sit around every Saturday and be pampered, but what do I need to be the fullest version of myself? The person that I want my kids and my partner and my clients to remember. Yeah. I always um, ask, um, you know, like I mentioned earlier, one of my most favorite questions is what are you doing for yourself as far as like, what are you doing to take care Mm -hmm. of yourself in your, you know, as a priority. And yeah. oftentimes I'll get, I'll get such a wide variety of answers, right? It goes from, you know, um, reading a book to going to the spa and getting my nails done and all of these things. And when I first started um, doing this, I, I would tell moms, I would tell them like, sometimes it's just going into the bathroom and closing the door and just mm-hmm. being alone. Mm-hmm. Right. It's, it's sitting in my car for five minutes extra by myself. It is not even going anywhere. It's not even right. taking the time to do anything spectacular. It's just being alone, being yeah. me. Yeah. Because, you know, it's, it, they just need so much all the time. That's true. Yes. It, Especially when you're a single parent, you know, when you have another parent who can, you know, take some of that burden for you, then it can actually, you know, take a little bit of that emotional toll off of you. But when you have another, when you're trying to do it all by yourself, it is a different, um, a different level of emotional. (laughs) Yeah, I imagine so. Yeah. So tell us, tell everyone who you love to work with. Like, who do you work with? Because I know we talked about this the other day. Yeah, I love to work with the moms and the couples who really do feel like they are kind of reinventing themselves or coming coming into back into their own skin through the transition of parenthood. Mm-hmm. Um, these are people who, you know, typically my clients are people who believe that like, humans are on a trajectory of growth and they like introspection. They want to learn about themselves. They want to learn about how their family can keep working together better and how they can contribute to society in mm-hmm. those ways. Um, so it's really the couple that wants to be a really good team. They want to share the mental load. They want to communicate effectively. They want to still have those little connections throughout the day um, while also being really present parents. And it's the mom who maybe needs to reconnect with her own identity so that she can show up in these other relationships the way that she wants to. Let's take a quick pause in the conversation. Are you a mom struggling to get your business the attention it deserves? Wish you had a reliable way to connect with customers seeking out your business? The mom-owned and operated business directory is your solution. Get discovered, build valuable connections, and give your business the boost it needs. 
Visit momownedandoperated.com to learn more. Now, let's get back to this inspiring interview. But you also work with just moms by themselves right. as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just in case just in case the mom can't get the the partner right. to join. Yes. Or, or or if there is no partner, right? Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. because it's all, you know, we learn what's in our locus of control. Um, Mm -hmm. And so regardless of whether both people are doing that at the same time or one person is showing up for her own growth and really owning who she's become as a mom, those are both really effective ways to, you know, benefit the family. Let's talk about what made you decide to start your business. What was your like jumping off point? What what motivated you to start? Yeah. Well, I was a teacher in another state when I became pregnant for the first time. Um, And really, I don't know if it was disinterest, laziness, what you would call it, but I did not want to transfer my teaching license up here to Ohio. And um, I, I really didn't want to be away from my baby. And so I didn't know a lot about online business at the time. My journey started in the MLM world where someone kind of showed me the ropes of here's how you use a project management system and here's how you schedule Instagram posts. I mean, these were the things I was learning early on Um, and, you know, selling someone else's product made me able to develop those skills and learn how to do those things. But what I quickly realized was that um, I was in kind of the health and and fitness field at that time. And a lot of women were coming to me because they wanted to feel like themselves again. And they were turning to the weight loss industry, hoping to feel like themselves again. And what I found was that weight loss was not the key to feeling like yourself as a mom. Mm -hmm. And these people needed something else. And through those conversations, I really saw the gaps. I saw the gaps in no one's helping these women reconnect with their identities and see all the ways their lives have changed. And they're feeling like if they just get their body back, their relationship is going to be on cloud nine again. But really, they were missing the skills of communication and how to work together as a team. And, you know, the romance that maybe was missing wasn't because they still had 10 extra pounds of baby weight. It was because they and their partners felt so distant from one another and they weren't sure how to get past talking about logistics and diaper blowouts. And so that's when I, I didn't know how at the time, but I knew that having something like that would have saved me a lot of heartache and would have been very, very helpful in saving some really hard times in my marriage. And so I set out on the life coaching path and did as much research and studying as I could on the, the matrescence and just kind of the, the birth of a mother and the communication and what is necessary for a meaningful, um, connection and teamwork as partners. Yeah. I love all of that. It's, it's so important because you are able to recognize that it really wasn't about the weight. And I think that a lot of women, that's what they think that at some point, if I get to this certain size, or if my business makes X amount of dollars, Mm -hmm. or if I do this, or once Mm -hmm. I buy this certain house or, or whatever the case is, once I, I hit that material thing, then Mm -hmm. my life is going to be so great. I'm going to be so happy. And, you know, it's not, that's, that's not it. And it's always, you know, the inner work, it's always, you know, I always tell my kids, especially now that, you know, some of them are trying to date and have relationships and, and especially the girls uh, in particular, because Mm -hmm. they're seeking validation from Mm -hmm. other people, you know, that this, your 
love, your validation comes from you first. It comes yeah. from you no matter what. And you have to do that first. That's your own work. And yeah. you know, no matter what happens, you need to do that first. And I think that a lot of times women miss out on that. And then as we become adults, we still seek that validation in so many other ways. And um, yeah, it, and it can cause problems throughout our entire lives. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I remember hearing the phrase and I used to think it was so enchanting of like finding your other half. Mm -hmm. Um, And that was something that was used a lot, you know, and now I really don't sit well (laughs) with that phrase because I think we have to have two whole, you know, in in a traditional relationship, you have two whole people showing up together and they need to be able to stand on their own feet, but also celebrate the strength that they bring together. Yes. I love that. I remember, you know, when I got married and, um, you know, we were in the church at that time and we went through the counseling and everything. And our pastor had told us, you know, each of you has to be at 100%. It's not a 50, 50 thing. You both have to be at 100%, and you know, and, you know, we carried that throughout the entire time. I know I did. Um, you know, so I felt like that was a good lesson to take away from the whole thing. So as we were starting to wrap it up and I, you know, I, I mentioned my favorite, um, question was always, what are you doing for you, Chelsea? What are you doing to, um, you know, Remember yourself because that's what this podcast is about. It's, you know, about raising your family, running your business, but most importantly, remembering you. What are you doing yeah. for you? Yeah. Well, <laughs> feels so cliche saying this, especially after just explaining my whole journey, <laughs> but it truly is exercise, <laughs> <laughs> but in such a reframed way. Like I, you know, I clung to exercise right after my baby, trying to lose the weight, trying to find some kind of self and worth again. Um, And then I kind of rebelled against it. Like this doesn't define me and I'm not, you know, going to focus on weight loss. And then I, I think I came back full circle to really saying like, I enjoy embracing my own strength. I enjoy stretching past my limits. Um, And so truly like starting my mornings with something like that, um, is, is good for me. And I'm a pretty intense person. And I think that just having that intensity first thing in the morning is something that I need, uh, Mm -hmm. so that I can, you know, go through my day a little bit more gently and level headed, but I, I do have to have that space and wild as it is, it starts with, um, 5 a.m. Monday running group. So we meet on Monday mornings, 5 a.m. And it, it just sets the tone for my week. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the I, I mean, I also feel like exercise is the thing that helps me maintain my sanity. I'm not a runner; that's not my thing. But <laughs> I get, I get it. Um, but you know, everybody has to find the thing that they love, and I think that you know, for you, it's running, and I, and I think that it's good to have it in a group setting because it creates mm-hmm. that accountability as well, right? If you're, it sometimes when you're set to do it by yourself, we don't do it, right? We we will make excuses for ourselves mm-hmm. and say, you know what, it's actually kind of cold. I'm not going to do it, <laughs> especially here in Ohio. Well, I still do that sometimes, but yeah. not as frequently. <laughs> right? As I but if would. you ha- yeah, you won't do it as much if you have yeah. if you have the group to you know that you know that they're going to be yeah. wanting to see you there. Um, okay, so where can everyone find you online? Where are you at? Yeah, pretty much everything is under postpartum together. So Instagram is postpartum together, Facebook, TikTok, those are all postpartum together. And I'm online at postpartumtogether.com, which I'll admit I'm kind of like going through a facelift transition stage, but there's, you know, I've spent a few years doing like new mommy blog stuff on there um, and I'm now really focused on, on the coaching aspect. Yeah, well, it's still there. So, you know, everybody can find you and they can get in touch and, you know, reach out and connect with you. So it was been such a pleasure. Chelsea, thanks you so much. Uh, Thank you. And there you have it. 
I want to encourage you to remember that being a mom who runs her own business is not easy. We all struggle, but just keep moving forward and don't forget to make time for yourself. As moms, we are usually the first thing to go to the bottom of the list. If your business is overwhelming you and you need real solutions, not just some sugar-coated suggestions, apply to work with me at ritasuzanne.com slash apply.